Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to take a look at how you can take plans from the little nav map, bring them over to Flight Sim and load them into the GPS so that you can fly them directly. Now the great thing is if you're working with little nav map, it's a very, very easy piece of software to use for the purposes of doing things like this, but there are a couple little, I call them kind of flight simisms that you have to kind of keep an eye out for. So let's go ahead and create a map. Uh, we're going to go ahead and go from Echo Sierra Sierra Bravo. I'm just going to right click as departure and we'll go up to Echo Foxtrot Tango Uniform. Now I'm not going to pull out Sim Brief today and kind of go through all the motions, but what I will do is I'll use the built-in wizard here to kind of generate this for me. Now I'll be doing this in the Boeing 247D. So 17,000 feet is probably a bit high for us. We definitely want to get some altitude in the event that we have to do some unintended gliding, but um, we're not going to go too, too high. So I'll select Victor Airways here. We'll do an altitude. We'll assume this is going to be an IFR flight plan. Let's call it uh, 9th, I'll well, do 11,000 feet. Seems pretty good. Press the adjust button. It's going to automatically grab onto it. The reason it has it adjusted for us is on account of the fact that it assumes we're flying IFR here. So if we go like that, adjust. No, it works perfectly. Come down here, press the calculate button. It's going to generate a really, really good look on route for us. So there's only one more thing we have to do here, and that's uh, coming all the way down here to Bromo, is we have to define our starting point. Now, if we're taking off from the runway, this is perfectly fine. I can just come and go ahead and leave it the way it is. Now, if you're taking off from a specific parking spot, what you actually want to do is come down here to one of these parking spots, right click on them, and then set them as the departure point. Now, when we load this up in flight sim, my airplane is going to be off, and it's also going to be parked at that particular position. Now, one of the things people think is, well, can you do that on the other end? Ah, uh, that's a bad news. If I were to zoom in on this and I right click on, let's say, parking nine, notice this is going to say add position to flight plan. So I'm like, oh, I'm in parking four. You're going to notice it's going to give you a bit of a hard time as far as allowing you to add that. It does not recognize the ability to select a particular parking spot. The next thing we have to do, of course, is export this over to flight sim. But before we do that, we just want to double check to make sure our altitude and type of flight is selected up here in the upper right left corner. Right now I'm doing 11,000 feet IFR. That checks out completely. If I were doing a VFR flight or something like that, you want to set these numbers now because when you load them into flight sim, it tends to get a little uh, freaky on you, and you'll know exactly what I mean. So now that I'm happy with all that, I'm going to come over to the top left, go ahead and press export. We have lots of choices here. I'm going to pick export to MF, try saying that too fast, Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020 plan. When you do that, they will open up your default folder here. Now, if you have a folder that you use for this typically, that's going to be appearing, and you can just grab it. IFR, this Broma, it's a Turku kind of a thing like that. That looks pretty good. Press the save button, and now it is saved into flight sim. Let's go ahead over there now. All right, we're over here in Flight Sim now for the hard part. So in the earlier versions of Flight Sim, you actually had the ability to load your scenarios right out of the bottom here. Unfortunately, they made it so you have to work a little harder for it. So what we're going to do is we're going to tap the space button. You can see this thing says load save. Tap that. And it's going to give you a bunch of different choices here. Obviously, you can load from Xbox Cloud Service if you have it. If you have your PC, that's us. I'm just going to click on that. And would you look at that? There's our flight plan. Go ahead and double click on that. And it's important that we kind of go through a couple little pieces here to make sure everything worked directly. First thing is notice it correctly selected our gate. Notice it correctly selected all the different approaches and departures if we chose them. The thing we could do is if we hit the nav log, you're going to notice it selected 11,000 feet for us, which is exactly what we wanted it to do. Now, one of the great things about this is I'm actually going to quickly switch airplanes to kind of show you what I mean. I'll grab something that has a GPS. Uh, right now, that does not. Oh, that looks like a good choice right there. Grab that one real quick. I'll press the fly button. Now, that's what I call loading time. Nah, skip trip, skip trip. <laughs> so what we're going to do here is we're just going to quickly get this thing rolling here. The purpose of this is just to show you how everything loads in for us. Now, what you're going to notice here is if I actually zoom down that all of the waypoints and things that we loaded into just a few minutes ago, seriously, automatically popped in here. As a matter of fact, if I were to zoom out like this, you can see that it skips that usual Microsoft approach positions and things like that and loads them directly into our GPS as we would need them to do it. If I press the fill button here, for example, I can actually press cursor and we could even go down here and select direct options and see like all the distances and everything ready to rock just as if it was a normal GPS before we even have to go through all the trouble. One of the things that's equally as useful for us is the fact that if we have an external GPS like we have here with this particular one, it'll actually load your flight plan in there as well. So you can see that this makes it much, much easier to plan your flight out in stages, suck it in rather than trying to use the built-in editor for that purpose. Uh, one thing I will warn you though is when you are doing this, uh, don't forget to go ahead and make sure your CDI is set correctly before you start flying the plane. Other than that, enjoy. Also, cute kitty.